Pregnancy comes with a long list of do's and don'ts, and they're hard to keep track of. If you're a little confused about what you should or shouldn't be drinking over the course of those nine long months, here's what you need to know. For some, it can be hard to picture going nine months without a cup of coffee or strong black tea, but here's the thing. You don't actually have to give up caffeine in its entirety. According to the American Pregnancy Association, moderate levels of caffeine have not been linked to any negative effects on pregnancy, and that's defined as anywhere from 150 to 300 milligrams per day or about two 8-ounce cups of coffee. However, it's important to remember that it's not just coffee and tea that contain caffeine. Chocolate, soda, and even some types of medicine contain the stimulant, which makes it easy to go well over the 300 milligrams without even realizing it. Of course, you may choose to play it safe and do without caffeine altogether. In fact, the APA says that going this route is the safest, partly because an unborn baby is incapable of metabolizing caffeine the way an adult can. They caution, even a small amount of caffeine can cause changes in your baby's sleep pattern or normal movement pattern in the later stages of pregnancy. But here's the good news. There are options out there that you can drink safely, and if it's something warm and comforting you're craving, reach for herbal tea. Herbal teas are full of antioxidants and are completely caffeine-free, making it a great choice for pregnant women. There's other benefits, too. Ginger and peppermint teas can help reduce the symptoms of morning sickness, and according to the APA, lemon balm tea has been found to have a calming effect on drinkers. Red raspberry leaf tea can even help you when it comes time to push, and the APA also says that this tea has been found to prevent expecting mothers from delivering too early or too late. You shouldn't drink just any old herbal tea, though. Herbal teas can be unsafe if they're not made commercially, made with excessive amounts of herbs, or made with herbs that are known to be toxic. You might not typically think anything of getting a glass of water to drink from your kitchen sink, but when you're pregnant, this might be a bad idea. Depending on the age of your home or apartment, your tap water may be passing through lead pipes. Consuming lead-laden water is not good for anyone, but pregnant women need to be even more cautious. Elizabeth Ward, a registered dietitian and nutrition consultant, highlighted some of the risks for WebMD. High levels of lead can cause low birth weight, preterm delivery, and developmental delays. You might think turning to bottled water would be your safest bet, but Ward explained that's not always true. Instead, having your tap water tested is advisable, but try not to worry if the test comes back showing trace amounts of lead. Although, ideally, it would be great to remove all of the lead pipes in your home, that's just not realistic. And fortunately, water filtration systems have proven to be both effective at removing lead and, good news, they're cost-effective. The Environmental Working Group advises purchasing a carbon-based filter that attaches directly to your Faucet, as those popular water pitchers aren't going to do the job nearly as well. What is this? Water. It's horrible! That said, you absolutely should be drinking plenty of water each and every day. And if you are pregnant, drinking water becomes even more important than before. Natalie B. Allen, a registered dietitian and clinical instructor of dietetics at Missouri State University, told us, The best choice when it comes to a drink for pregnant women is water. The amniotic fluid needs to be replenished, and water helps the baby in many ways. In other words, water keeps your cells well hydrated and just generally helps your body to be as healthy as it can. According to Healthline, pregnant women should drink about 10 cups or 80 ounces of water every single day. This is really only 8 ounces more than is recommended for women who are not pregnant, but if you weren't an avid water drinker prior to becoming pregnant, this might be more than you're used to. If you plan to breastfeed after giving birth, upping your water intake to the recommended level while pregnant will help prepare you for another increase. According to Healthline, breastfeeding women need to consume about 13 cups, so drink up. More than likely, any of the orange juice you find at the supermarket will have gone through the pasteurization process. This means that the juice was heated to a high temperature to kill any lurking bacteria and then cooled, making it safe to drink. Still, it's important to locate the word pasteurized on the label before purchasing. You should also be wary of any juices or ciders labeled fresh squeezed. While these beverages taste great, fresh squeezed indicates that the beverage is unpasteurized. This means it can potentially be contaminated with dangerous bacteria bacteria such as E. coli. And don't forget, it's also wise to check with your friends, family members, and even the restaurants that you visit to make sure all are serving pasteurized juices, too. 
But as long as you can get your hands on the pasteurized stuff, orange juice has been found to be a great choice for pregnant women. Be sure to choose an OJ that's been fortified with calcium, as this is vital for bone health, registered dietitian Natalie B. Allen told us. The citrusy beverage also contains potassium, which can help lower high blood pressure, a potentially dangerous condition in pregnant women. Orange juice also works well when taken with your prenatal vitamin. Allen explained, The vitamin C in the juice will enhance iron absorption, and orange juice also contains folate, which is important in neurological fetal development. Washing down your prenatal vitamin with orange juice is good for another reason. Iron supplements can cause nausea, and all that vitamin C in the juice not only enhances the absorption, as Alan explained, but also helps reduce queasiness. You okay, Margie? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just morning sickness. Lemonade is also a great choice. The lemons will work to reduce nausea. Of course, you'll just want to make sure you're not consuming lemonade with tons of added sugar, and you'll want to make sure your lemonade contains, you know, real lemons. Not all sports drinks and sodas are created equal, and this is another time that reading labels and being diligent is important. In good health, it's okay to consume sugar during pregnancy, but you may still want to consider monitoring how much you're drinking sugary beverages. That is, make sure you're not solely relying on sports drinks or drinks with even higher amounts of sugar to meet your fluid intake goal. Alan agrees that sugary beverages are not generally harmful to the baby, but she also pointed out that they're not all that nutritious either. Occasionally, indulging in a sugary beverage is probably A-OK, -okay, but it's best to maintain balance and avoid overdoing it throughout your pregnancy. Nevertheless, sports drinks with electrolytes can be safely consumed during pregnancy, Alan told us. Some moms may experience leg cramps during pregnancy. If this happens, try a sports drink, as the electrolytes and fluid will help alleviate the cramp. It's the electrolytes that are the important thing, as they're a combination of minerals including magnesium, potassium, calcium, and sodium that help the body maintain a proper balance of fluids. And even for pregnant women who do not experience leg cramps, sports drinks fortified with electrolytes are a good choice. Although raw milk is seeing a bit of a movement, the United States Food and Drug Administration advises everyone to avoid consuming it. But what exactly is raw milk anyway? According to the FDA, raw milk is milk from cows, sheep, and goats, or any other animal that has not been pasteurized to kill harmful bacteria. This means it can carry bacteria such as Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria, and others, which basically means it can come with a huge helping of food poisoning. Though the bacteria found in raw milk isn't good for anyone, it can be especially dangerous for pregnant women. Listeria bacteria can cause an infection called listeriosis, and that's particularly dangerous for pregnant women and their unborn babies. In some cases, it can be lethal. While the government has banned the sale of raw milk in the United States, raw milk is legal in other parts of the world. You'll want to watch out for this while traveling abroad, and if someone does happen to offer you raw milk in the States, steer clear. It's not worth the risk. Keeping that in mind, it's also worth noting that pasteurized milk is one of the best things an expecting mother can drink. Alan told us, You can't beat dairy milk with its combination of protein, carbohydrates, and essential vitamins and minerals. The baby's bones develop the most in the last trimester, so add a glass of milk daily, particularly as the pregnancy progresses. The United States Department of Agriculture advises pregnant women to consume three cups of dairy products per day, but that doesn't necessarily mean whole milk. Drinking non-fat or low-fat milk can help you avoid unwanted saturated fat while still giving you all the good stuff. Amazingly, even if you had symptoms of lactose intolerance before conceiving, you might find that you're able to tolerate cow's milk now that you're pregnant. According to registered and licensed dietitian Katherine Zaratsky, for many women, the ability to digest lactose improves during pregnancy, especially later in pregnancy. This means you might be able to drink milk and eat other dairy products without discomfort. For expecting mothers who wish to avoid drinking cow's milk, though, soy milk is a viable alternative as long as you read the labels. To get the full range of benefits, you'll need to choose brands that have been fortified with calcium. If you're having trouble with the idea of drinking milk, try using it as a base for smoothies. Not only will you get your milk, but your fruits and vegetables, too. It's a total win. While it may be your favorite way to partake in the holiday cheer, unpasteurized eggnog, especially of the homemade variety, should be avoided during pregnancy. You may not have paid much attention to the name before you were pregnant, but eggnog is, well, exactly what it sounds like. Egg yolks, whole milk, heavy cream, and sugar are the main ingredients of this sweet wintertime refreshment. 
Due to the raw eggs, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services advises against unpasteurized and homemade varieties of the nog. Raw eggs can, as we all know, contain salmonella. Although literally no one would enjoy having salmonella, pregnant women should be especially cautious. In some instances, salmonella can lead to sepsis, a sometimes fatal blood infection. Rarely, salmonella can also cause miscarriages or preterm birth. However, you can definitely make safe-to-consume eggnog by cooking it to at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you're more of a store-bought eggnog fan, you can buy one labeled pasteurized to avoid any risk of salmonella. You may have heard stories from mothers who consumed alcohol throughout their pregnancies who had no problems or complications, but time and time again, you're warned to give that alcoholic beverage a miss. It doesn't matter if we're talking about a glass of whiskey or a glass of wine, the answer is always the same. Skip it. So what's the truth? And is there any acceptable level of alcohol? The American Academy of Pediatrics is clear. According to a 2015 report, no amount of alcohol intake should be considered safe. There is no safe trimester to drink alcohol. All forms of alcohol, such as beer, wine, and liquor, pose similar risk, and binge drinking poses dose-related risk to the developing fetus. While it may sound relaxing to unwind with a glass of white wine here or there, the risks, from developmental disorders to birth defects, are completely preventable if you avoid any and all alcohol consumption during your pregnancy. Let's agree to pop the bubbly after the baby is born. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.